out to discuss a little bit more. Sal Galatioto, he is the president of GSP Capital, which helps to broker deals for teams. In recent years, he has been involved in Comcast sale of the Philadelphia Sixers, Tribune sale of the Chicago Cubs, dozens more. He has also been approached by several potential Dodgers bidders. And also Scott Shosnick, our resident expert covering the business of sports for Bloomberg News. Welcome, both of you. Glad to see you, Sal. Not that I'm not glad to see you, Scott. But, <laughs> that's uh, everybody else. <laughs> that's everybody else. All right. So, Sal, I know you can't get too much into the nitty gritty because my guess is you're working on a few potential bids. Let's just start with number then. How many bids do you think we could actually see for the LA Dodgers? They're going to be a great many. Uh, how many will be uh, real bidders? Uh, we, we still have to figure that out, but uh, four groups have uh, contacted me already. Uh, there'll be probably at least uh, 16 to 18 groups in the beginning. That'll be whittled down fairly quickly as people do due diligence and you figure out how much this thing's actually going to sell for. And Scott, I mean, from Bloomberg, you were part of this reporting that Fox actually might be interested. Well, they came out and said they're not interested, but I'll believe it when I see it. I was just going to say, can, that was my next question. Yeah, you Chase Carey it? said no. However, they went to great lengths last time to ensure that they would retain the broadcast rights. They told a potential buyer that, one, they had to hold the broadcast rights for 10 years, and then if they ever did sell, they couldn't sell to the likes of Disney, Comcast, Time Warner. They need to solidify their hold on Southern California, a very profitable regional sports network area for them. So it might make more sense to buy the team than have to just pay a traditional rights fee. So what do you think about a media company owning a sports team? The track record hasn't been so hot. Well, actually, the Fox did own the Dodgers at one point and sold them to Frank uh, McCourt. Uh, Disney owned the uh, Ducks and the Angels. I sold both of those for Disney. Time Warner owned the teams in Atlanta. It sold those teams. Uh, so the trend has been to get out of the business. But I understand Scott's point of view. The media rights are so valuable now. Uh, that from a business point of view, um, you know, you can make a very good case that you'd want to own the underlying asset and control the media rights in perpetuity. What kind of, let's just say, person or corporation, though, do you think is the best kind of owner? Uh, I don't think... Uh, is it too hard to categorize? It's very difficult. I mean, some do a very good job. Uh, you know, Comcast does a great job with the Flyers, uh, but they recently divested themselves of the 76ers. Uh, you know, the, the track record hasn't been great for corporates owning it, uh, owning these types of assets. It's mostly individuals. The fans like to see a face of the team. I mean, that's, that's what happens. Let's look at the most successful sports league we have in the U.S., the National Football League. Correct. They disallow corporate ownership. They don't want sort of the quarter-to-quarter -quarter business interest getting in the way of the long-term success of the franchise. And you hit on something big with Fox. I mean, just how do the teams make money? For those who don't know, you guys know this cold, but maybe for people who don't. Well, there's some major parts of your revenue streams. That's your tickets, your media broadcast, both national and revenue, uh, national and local. And the local revenue, Sal, I think you'll agree, teams keep a lot of that money. So if you can maximize your local revenue and sponsorship, that's one way you can get an advantage over the other clubs in your league. So then why, and I guess, Sal, I'll toss this back to you, but, Scott, you have tons of context as well. I mean, why so many bankruptcies then lately for sports teams? What's going on? Well, I mean, part of it is... Look, some of these teams are over-levered. Some of them just spend too much money. I mean, it's, the, the fact is that they're great assets, but you can only lever them so much. And uh, there's volatility in earnings here. And some of them just, you know, can't carry the debt. I mean, it's, it's difficult to do. Like you said, they're over-leveraged. Debt has been certainly yeah, the premier the reason problem. why. However, one sports banker told me years ago, and I'll never forget it, that the most astute businessman, when he gets involved in professional sports, becomes adult instantaneously. It's is hard it because of the overhead. passion? Yes, is it's it because hard overhead. Who yeah. could have told you that? Uh, I, I didn't know if a certain <laughs> person would want me to say who it was, but it was this guy right here, and I've seen it time and time again, that yeah. guys can establish a budget and know they're going to blow it if they re-sign a player, but that player inevitably so comes back. So it seems like it's kind of like owning a vineyard. You start with a very large fortune, and then you end up making a small fortune. If you make any fortune if at all. If you make any fortune right. at all. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining us here. Of course, the legendary Sal, the legendary Scott, joining us right here on Money Moves. Thank you, gentlemen.